Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a couple of guides to help you get a better experience using the OnePlus 3. The first thing we're going to do is change the DPI without actually needing root. The other thing I want to show you guys is how to use OTG on your OnePlus 3. This is TK, let's check it out. Here we have the OnePlus 3. We're using stock uh, DPI, and you'll notice basically uh, at the at the very top, this is the standard clock widget. Uh, of course, I can't make it any smaller. And if I want to move things, I'm pretty much limited to just two rows, and it really kind of lacks the functionalities that I'd like to be able to use. Uh, now, when I go down to the applications, you'll notice the furthest down I'm able to go to is the music, stock music application, Netflix phone. Uh, keep these in mind because we're going to be able to modify this and show you guys how this is going to change. Uh, the other thing I want to show you guys real quick is uh, everything is still stock. We have our applications here. This is not modified. So I'm going to plug in my USB Type-C cable. Make sure that you have USB debugging turned on. Now for me, I have it on, but if you don't know, you go into settings, you go all the way down to about phone, uh, go down to the build number, keep pressing it till you get developer options on. Once you have that, go into developer options, and then it's right under debugging, just turn that on. And when you turn it on and you connect it to the PC, it's gonna ask you to authorize the PC. Now on the PC, the other thing that you wanna make sure that you have installed is ADB. For me, I have universal ADB installed. Again, I'll give you guys a link in the description below to be able to get that. Uh, follow the instructions in the link itself. It points us from an XDA thread over to uh, android.wonderhowto.com and they had a process on how to change screen density without using root. And because we're using ADB, any of the devices will work. You just have to have USB debugging turned on. Um, the short version of it is once you have ADB installed, uh, the way to make sure that you have your device connected, you do ADB devices. If you spell it correctly. Once you do that, you'll you'll get a confirmation that the device is connected. And if it says unknown, make sure you correct this. Make sure you have the drivers installed correctly. Uh, when we have this information here, the instructions go through. We'll, we'll go here, and we just need to type in the command adb shell dump sys display, essentially getting us the information for the system display for configuration right now. It's a very very long list, but the main thing you want to do is scroll almost all the way to the top part of that list. So we'll go back to where we started our command, and that's where we have. Not the first big paragraph of uh, information, but almost at the second one. Uh, going through the information here, you'll notice that it'll start talking about density, and here it is, 480. Uh, that's the default density on the device, and what we're gonna go ahead and do now is change that to say we wanna go a different density. Now, as you guys see, the device on the phone, we'll go ahead and bring it into frame. Uh, we'll go ahead and change the density. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to 400, and the command is very simple, ADB shell WM density 400, and then you have the two and signs ADB reboot. So once the command is executed, it's gonna basically reboot for the screen density to take effect. We'll say okay. You'll notice the device is rebooting right now. And we're pretty much done here if we don't wanna configure things or change things. If you wanna go back to standard, you just go back in here and change the value to 400 or 480. So the device will keep rebooting. It should be pretty quick. Once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and go back into the device. Right out of the box, you'll notice things are off-centered because we changed the density. If you remember in the beginning when we started, we only had one, one row. So I'm gonna bring in more things now just to kind of show you guys what they look like. Here's the second row. Here's your third row. And you'll also notice that the widget itself now needs to be resized again to fit into the 400 DPI that we added. So we now have two, one additional row on the launcher on the home screen. And in the app drawer, you'll notice now I'm not down to the music application, I'm down to the Google Play music. Um, and it actually m fits much, much more information. Um, it translates over the uh, all over the UI. You can go in, go into apps, uh, give it a second to load. And it'll also make sure that everything fits and looks much better on your device. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the actual OTG functionality. Uh, I'm gonna keep this the way it is. I have a mini a little adapter. This is called the Minova Dash Micro Type-C. I have a 64 gigabyte card that's built in and it has a Type-C connector. By default, out of the box, if you plug this into your OnePlus 3, and this is just not, not doing anything to it, nothing special, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't recognize anything. Here it just says HD, this is for OS over LTE for my T-Mobile connection. But I don't have access to it. It's not connected, it doesn't really work. And that's because by default, for some reason, OnePlus decided to turn it off. Uh, we'll go ahead and go into our system settings and first thing of course we'll go ahead and unplug our adapter uh, we need to go under storage and usb again it doesn't show any of the options but if you go into the menu it says enable otg at this point now you're able to use any otg functionality using type c connector of course as soon as i plug it in give it a few seconds 
you'll notice the USB uh, information up there is uh, turned on and it says scanning, USB drive is connected. We'll say explore and voila. Now you have access to your OTT functionality. I don't know why it's off by default. Uh, it just boggles me. I think this is something that should be on and if nothing else, just say, hey, you know, turn it on and turn it off if you don't want it. Uh, unmounting your device is the same way as any other one. You just say eject. Wait for it to say the message that the device has been unmounted. Now that it says safe eject and you're back out, you're pretty good. You can keep this on your keychain uh, and give you really nice ability to extend your memory on your OnePlus 3. Now it has built in 64 gigs, but with this additional 64 gigs, now I have access to 128 gigs of storage, which is really, really nice, very functional. And this thing is extremely small. So to sum it up pretty quickly, uh, the DPI, the default DPI on the OnePlus 3 is 480. So when you first start off this entire process, um, just remember that if you ever want to go back to stock, just change the DPI back to 480 and you're set. Um, I did find that 460 kind of works, but 4, 400 for me kind of worked as the sweet spot. Uh, it gave me the, the additional row. I could see more text, especially when browsing. Uh, the launcher is not exactly very friendly with it, so you, you won't notice too much, but it does actually increase the visibility, at least as I showed you guys with the hands-on. You're actually able to see more more out of the applications within your app drawer. Uh, so that was a very simple mod. As far as the OTG, again, it was more just to let you guys know that it's actually a built-in feature that's turned off for some reason. So that was really puzzling me because I was trying to use it and it didn't work. And now you guys know how to turn it on, how to basically use it uh, and make an expandable storage option available for you on stock non-eroded devices. Uh, the little dongle thing that I showed you guys, uh, the adapter that I used, I'll give you guys a link in the description below to be able to pick it up. They have one for USB Type-C and they also have one for your micro USB if you want to pick it up for yourself. Other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is the LG G5. It's here. I finally have it from T-Mobile. I did a pre-order and a front-facing camera. Fingerprint sensor is at the bottom. And again, this isn't a button. It's a